all right everybody assalamu alaikum so today we are going to talk about drugs that are going to affect the, the that would actually act drugs acting on interior pituitary gland if you remember in my uh, previous lectures i've been talking about hypothalamus and i've been talking about anterior pituitary and overall pituitary gland and i called pituitary gland master hormone producer right it's a master gland which produces hormones so you see uh, <clears throat> so today we are going to talk about drugs that will enhance the function of uh, the anterior pituitary anterior pituitary since i talked before as well that it, it releases a good amount of hormones okay so it will not be possible it, i can actually cover up a lot of hormones in one class only but i don't want to do that because i want you guys to retain the knowledge as well okay so today my major focus will be on growth hormone agonist and growth hormone antagonist so our major focus for today's lesson is growth hormones okay that if let's say if some child is born and uh, the child's growth is retarded so what hormones can we give to the child to uh, in order to make the child really you know tall and uh, there uh, you will actually read about a lot of syndromes today uh, where the growth is actually affected very badly and then let's say if somebody has hypermegaly i hope you all remember uh, in my previous slide uh, last day i showed to you kali uh, who is an indian wrestler he's really tall so you know uh, for such people what kind of a, a growth hormone antagonist we can give in order to suppress the growth okay all right so first of all we are going to cover up we are going to talk about growth hormone agonists which are somatotropin i really hope you have memorized my previous lectures because literally if you'll sit at the night of the viva and you'll try to learn everything in one night so no way it's not possible at all anyway so <clears throat> the growth hormone agonists uh it's a structure is this that the growth hormone is a 191 amino acid protein produced in the anterior pituitary so secretion of gh is controlled by hypothalamic factors we have already talked about it so actions and pharmacological properties the effect of growth hormone are mediated by specific membrane receptors all right so what kind of specific membrane receptors are that let's talk about it growth hormone has two independent receptor interaction domains and one molecule of gh tethers two gh receptor together and the homodimer activates a tyrosine kinase jack2 uh i don't know if you uh if you still remember the receptor and uh, you know about the entire working of jack stat if you don't know that i will try to link wait a minute i have two messages in the chat g ma'am repeat sorry anyways so beta i was saying that you see i was saying that uh wait a minute here wait let me have a pen um okay so you see here they're saying the specific membrane receptor okay and then they're saying that uh, what happens is this that it's actually a dimer okay a dimer is like this okay and it's a trans membrane all right it's a trans membrane receptor it means it's a membrane all right and the receptor is across the membrane all right and here over here on its end the stats are attached now what happens is this here you see it's it's like this now when gh will come here all right you see here they're saying that one molecule of gh tethers two gh receptors so you see this is one gh receptor this is second gh receptor okay so one big molecule of growth hormone okay it tethers on the two receptors and as soon as it happens the two actually come closer ठीक है, they they come really close, all right, and when they come closer, then phosphorylation of stats happen, 
all right and then they go to nucleus and uh, then on chromatin network is specific proteins are being made okay so gh has both direct action and indirect actions mediated by the induction of insulin like growth factor 1 synthesis in and release from liver and kidney all right great <clears throat> so some of the direct because in the last slide we talked about direct action and then we talked about indirect actions okay so the direct actions are wait let me get the pointer okay so the direct actions are antagonism of action of insulin all right so what is the insulin's action? Insulin actually gathers glucose and then the glucose is being converted into glycogen, right? So it antagonizes its action, okay? It means a lot of glucose is actually available. Stimulation of triglyceride hydrolysis in adipose tissue. Again, this is done. You see, I don't know if you remember this or not, but in adipose tissue, all right? Lipolysis actually happens, okay, and then this triglyceride hydrolysis happens because of, and because of uh, which we'll get a lot of glucose molecules, okay. So increase hepatic glucose output, positive calcium balance, renal reabsorption of sodium and potassium, production of somatomedians or uh, wait a minute or IGF in the liver and other tissue. <clears throat> okay, so what exactly is this somatomedian? So you see, wait a minute, let me explain. Okay, so somatomedians is actually uh, a group of proteins, okay, that promotes cell growth and division and response to stimulation by the growth hormone, okay? So indirect actions of growth hormone mediated by IGF-1 include longitudinal growth of bones and uh, growth of soft tissues. Uh, in my upcoming slides, I will talk more about this factor, okay? Increase amino acid transport, DNA and RNA synthesis. When DNA is being duplicated, it means your cell is duplicating even more, okay? Your cell growth is there. there. And when RNA is synthesizing, that means your protein, all right, it's being manufactured. So both are good for the growth. Proliferation of many tissues. Increased protein synthesis. Again, protein is there for the growth and positive nitrogen balance. The more nitrogen is there, the more no protein it can make, okay, the body can make. So, uh, Growth hormones is administered by intramuscular or subcutaneous injection. These blood levels are obtained in two to four hours. Activity persists for 36 hours after administration. Because of the relatively half-life of somatomedian, a depot preparation composed of microsevers of Somatotropin embedded in biodegradable polyactide co glycodide microspheres is designed to decrease the number of injections required. Hmm. Can anybody tell me in the message? Okay, and I'm actually having an eye on who will tell fastest. Okay, so tell me what is the deport preparation? What is it about? Because when I said in intramuscular, it means you know that it's uh, an injection which you'll give in the muscle. Subcutaneous, you know that. What is depot preparation? I'm waiting. Six slides, wait a minute. Uh, let me resume. Okay. All right, wait. So you see, a depot preparation is a preparation actually which you give, all right? And then you see, these are microspheres, all right? So microspheres, which are made of biodegradable material, okay? Uh, take it as if small, small spheres are there, all right? And in those spheres, 
you put your medicine inside her, all right? And that, since it's biodegradable, so slowly and gradually its shell will be degrading, okay? And the ball will be cracked up and then slowly and gradually uh, the main active ingredient will be released, okay? Whenever we do uh, give medicine by such method, okay? So we are just doing it because we want to decrease the number of injections required, okay? Hmm. So, therapeutic uses of growth hormones. Growth hormone is used for replacement therapy in children with GH deficiency before uh, epiphyseal closure. Now, what is this epiphyseal closure? You see, I told you guys I'll talk about it. So you see this here. Can you see here the growth plate? All right. And can you see here the growth plate? So this is a mature bone and this is an immature bone. Okay. So what happens is when the bone is immature, all right, it, it, and it can actually grow. All right. So the thing is this, it has this growth plate, which is there. Okay. And it has this end, uh, you know, this part of bone, which can actually grow. All right. Longitudinally, it can grow even more. But here, if you see, the bone is fully developed and now it cannot grow at all, okay? So the thing is, uh, GH is used for replacement therapy in children with GH deficiency before the closure, all right? It is not this, that you are 21 years old and after 21 or 22 years old, uh, you are planning to get this GH uh, therapy. No, it's not that, okay? It won't work actually. Uh, growth hormone stimulates growth in patients with Turner syndrome. Now, what is Turner syndrome? First of all, I want you to look here. You see, on 23rd, uh, you know, chromo uh, on 23rd pair, there's one X, either it's fully missing, all right? Uh, the X chromosome, or it's partially missing, all right? And because of which, you see, the webbed neck is there, and there's, uh, the growth is stunted, all right? So in order to treat such patients with stunted growth, you actually give them uh, growth hormone, which will help them to grow, all right? Otherwise, they will have stunted growth. So other approved uses include long-term replacement of GH deficiency in adults, uh, treatment of cachexia, and acquired immune deficiency syndrome, uh, wasting. All right, so what is cachexia? Cachexia is actually that somebody was ill for a longer period of time and now their muscles have been wasted, all right? So in order to uh, give them a growth boost, we give them this growth hormone, all right? And acquired immunodeficiency syndrome wasting. When we say wasting, it means that their muscles are being wasted, okay? Uh, all right. So positive nitrogen balance in patients with severe burn. Uh, then we have Prader Willi syndrome in children. Now, what is Prader Willi syndrome? Wait. Oh, I did not attach any picture. Uh, all right. I'll tell you orally about it, okay? That, uh, you see, Prader Willi syndrome is actually a genetic order, genetic disorder. I've got a message from somebody in your class. Uh, okay. You are very late. No problem. All right, so I was talking about Prader Willi syndrome, okay? So it's actually a genetic disorder caused by loss of function of a specific genes on chromosome 15, all right? On chromosome 15, actually, that, that's a uh, uh, d disorder because of which this uh, syndrome is there. So the symptoms are muscles are being weak of these uh, people who have this syndrome, and then they have poor feeding, uh, you know, habits, and then they, uh, they have short, they're short, okay? They have short stature. Now, you see, guys, when somebody has this kind of a syndrome, okay, since I've already said they're, they're short, so we give them this, uh, you know, uh, treatment. And since it's a genetic disorder, so the best way to catch this syndrome is actually by, uh, you know, DNA testing, all right? Okay. And short bowl syndrome. All right. Who will tell me that why exactly? Okay, first of all, let me tell you what is short bowl syndrome. Short bowl syndrome is this 
that the small in the, the small intestine okay it is not of the length uh, that it should be and it's actually uh, you can say some or uh, some part of the intestine is not functional okay now i am actually waiting in the chat box who will tell me that how come short bowl syndrome is act will actually uh, you know affect our growth how come how come intestine is playing role in our growth i'm waiting for your response dietary intake okay good umehdiba you're a bit closer try to give more guys Uh, the person will eat less. Less absorption will cause stunted growth. Okay. First of all, these people won't eat less. Okay, because I'm not saying their appetite will be less. All right. I am saying yes. You're right. There will be less absorption. You are partially there, Asifa. I want you to get fully there. What What will be less absorbed? What What will be less absorbed? That will cause stunted growth. what will be there what compound what molecule what monomer okay okay very good sara well done sara said proteins but sara are proteins actually uh, they are taken in the small intestine are they malnutrition amino acids very good sara now you are there you see uh, the thing is this amino acids are uh, you know absorbed in the small intestine okay amino acids and glucose all right so uh, very good sara you win it all right so the thing is that uh, you see when somebody has short bowel syndrome so amino acids will be absorbed less and because of which the growth will be stunted okay good sara well done okay <clears throat> now adverse oh, now adverse effect and contraindication in about 2% of patients anti gh antibodies uh, develop now what is anti gh antibodies antibodies are there who actually kill those uh, molecules which are not made in our body okay they kill antigens so the thing is this anti gh so against the gh these antibodies develop okay uh, so you see and because of these antibodies edema metabolic disturbances and injection site reactions uh, are there all right so administration of gh is contraindicated in obese patients why why patients with closed epiphyses who do not have gh deficiency and patients with neoplastic disease neoplastic disease is actually the cancers you know when the cells are growing abnormally why 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 exactly is gh contraindicated in obese patient why give me response in the chat box because it increases muscle mass okay think more yes you're right partially think more it's about how well you were present mentally when i was discussing uh, cuz it increases growth yeah it does but why 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 an obese person why Okay, let me get back to the slide haan ji now can you think of okay very good iraj now it is just thinking good 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 she is saying prevent insulin it contributes to insulin resistance okay yusra oh wow big word all right
a FIFA, uh, maybe because they will grow more abnormally. Okay, yeah, but why? That's our question, a FIFA. Why will they grow abnormally? What's what wrong? What what wrong can happen to them? Okay, so you see, a FIFA, Yustra, Iraj, uh, Sara, Umme Habiba. I want to see you guys in the next class. Okay, I want to see you. Do turn on your cameras in the next class tomorrow. Okay. All right. So the thing is this. You see, direct actions and indirect actions. When we talk about direct actions. It's saying antagonism of action of insulin. It means that glucose will be released. Okay, hydrolysis of triglycerides. Increase glucose and blah, blah, blah. Uh, increase sodium and potassium. Oh my God, so many minerals and so much of glucose. Uh, what will happen to the person's heart? Just imagine, right? Uh, so it will be a very chaotic situation in the person's body who would be taking all of these together. Yes, very good, Shagupta. Okay. Now the thing is, okay, we have done that. Now let's move on to GH endogonism. Okay. And its name is like really weird. It's Peg Visomant. All right. So do try to remember that Peg Visomant. All right. So its therapeutic uses is this. That as we have already discussed, it's GH receptor endogonist. All right. So it is a recombinant GH uh, that contains nine mutations that allow it to bind to one GH receptor, but it fails to bind to a second GH receptor. This blocks the action of endogenous GH. Uh, if you remember, in the very first or second slide I showed to you, I drew the GH receptor, right? Uh, Jack stat mechanism. And then um, I, I told you that one molecule was attached to two, recept, two, uh, two parts of the receptor, right? So basically one of the GH receptor will be blocked. So it can't attach to the other one at all, okay? So this blocks the action of endogenous GH used specifically for the treatment of acromegaly. Okay, so we should give, it, give this to Kali. All right, so it is administered subcutaneously. All right, by the way, I want you all to tell me in the next class, not right now, okay? Can we actually gift it to that tall guy? And can he actually become short? All right, I want you to think about it. Uh, that is it for today, everybody. Thank you so much.